Hello and welcome to the Focal Point Strategy and Solutions Center focusing on unified messaging, sponsored by AVST. I'm Carmi Levy, Senior Research Analyst with Infotech Research Group. Within this site, you'll find a variety of resources to bring you up to speed on the benefits of unified messaging, including the latest news, case studies, white papers, and a series of short video programs produced by AVST and ITWorld.com. In this segment, I speak with Hardy Myers, President and CEO of AVST, about understanding what unified messaging is, making the business case for it, and explaining the difference between unified messaging and unified communications. Hardy, we're talking about unified messaging and, and uh, we've spoken about some of the key drivers of it, why it's important for, for businesses to consider what the benefits go, uh, of U UM could be going forward. But like every new technology, there is no free ride. There are some things that you have to consider before you jump into sure. the pool. What are those? Well, I, I like to keep it simple and I, I call it the three C's, uh, capacity, compliance, and confidentiality. And capacity, what I mean is, is really you have to figure out where you want to store your messages. And this is a, um, somewhat of a holy war. And uh, we don't propose at, at AVST, we don't propose to tell enterprises which way to do it. Uh, the point is they need to know that there are different ways to do it and they should definitely, when they're looking at unified messaging solutions, consider that. Uh, compliance has to do with really, uh, you know, what they view as their uh, message retention issues relative to either Sarbanes-Oxley or some other compliance issue that they might have. And again, we don't take a position on this, but there are different answers depending on which uh, where you determine you want to store and archive your messages. Um, and then really confidentiality, for some enterprises, um, unified messaging really isn't a good fit. Uh, enterprises that have absolutely confidential, critical uh, voicemail type communications may not view the idea of having their uh, voice messages put into an email environment and thus being able to be distributed outside the enterprise as being something that, that a risk that they're willing to take. They don't, they don't want to have their CEOs voicemail mm -hmm. you know, out on the internet or something like that. So there, that's an issue that um, we see many large enterprises uh, that we talk to uh, concerned about relative to UM and, and frankly that in some ways may inhibit the adoption for certain enterprises. So obviously what you have currently in place, your legacy applications, your legacy infrastructure will, will color your unified messaging strategy going forward. Um, how then do you, uh, you know, what are the considerations that you need to, to, to think through um, as you look at your legacy infrastructure and plan a UM implementation? Sure. Really two questions, really two, two issues to consider. One is interoperability. So um, you want to make sure, for example, if you're not going to change your telephony infrastructure over the next few years, you want to make sure you can, you can acquire a unified messaging solution that can interoperate with that legacy solution, number one, or legacy telephony infrastructure. Do, and, all, do all solutions offer that or is it a tough navigation? There are some that do and there are some that don't. And so it's just, you, before you spend a lot of time going down a specific path, you want to make sure that the ones, if, if in fact you're not changing your telephony infrastructure, that you are talking to vendors that support um, the interoperability requirements that you have in your enterprise. Mm -hmm. The second issue really is one around your groupware, uh, your groupware application. So, uh, for example, you know Microsoft uh, Exchange, Lotus Notes, uh, Novell groupware, mm -hmm. and whether or not you're going to stay with your your particular groupware application or you plan to change. Because if you plan to change in the future, again, it's really important for you that you have what I call groupware interoperability. That is, for example, if you're um, a Lotus Note shop and you're ultimately going to go to Exchange or vice versa, you want to make sure if you're deploying unified messaging today that if you decide to switch your groupware two or three years from now, that you've essentially future-proofed your investment by having a solution that's a unified messaging solution that's flexible enough to make that transition. So is it possible then, if you're not careful and you don't dot all your I's and cross all your T's, that if you move into unified messaging without planning to this degree, you could lose some functionality? Well, you may have to buy a new, new solution, yeah. Mm -hmm. So yes. spend twice uh, to yeah. get back to and the that, same. Place. That's something that you know. My, my experience is most enterprise guys, enterprise IT guys, don't like to have to deal with. Mm -hmm. So interoperability is a critical issue in the corporate uh, communications environment today. I keep harping on legacy. I apologize for that, but it's it's, okay. a, it's an important consideration for most IT managers. Um, earlier, you had said that uh, UM isn't for everyone uh, right. at this point in time. Can we dig a little bit more into that? Sure. Sure. Um, couple things. First of all, there are core uh, ca applications or capabilities of uh, the legacy Octel 
the VMX uh, systems that we see uh, enterprises wanting to retain. Mm -hmm. So this is a very important question when, or important uh, consideration when you're buying a UM capable or a unified messaging system that you make sure that you get those, you ha that you have access to those uh, types of capabilities. Let me give you a simple example. Uh, many enterprises we talk to today, the CEO uh, prefers to communicate with his employees via a voice type broadcast. So for example, if there is a big uh, a customer win or the enterprise is doing something with the community or something like that, uh, the CEO will prefer to communicate with his employees via a voicemail, uh, voicemail um, so that they can hear his intonation, uh, his enthusiasm, his excitement. You can't do that in email as you know. Um, you know. When you send an email out, it's really left to the reader to interpret your tone and, uh, and your, your sincerity, I guess, is the way to say it. And you hope and, that it's well received. Right, right. And how many times have you had emails that, you know, somebody misread what you were trying to say? Too so, many. yeah, so I, we see that, uh, that, that kind of requirement uh, quite often in enterprises today. And that isn't something that a unified messaging solution can deliver. So a UM-capable solution that has some of that core voicemail functionality uh, really can enable an enterprise to deliver not only that sort of requirement the CEO wants, but also UM to the knowledge workers, the mobile workers, the enterprise, which is exactly the way we see it being deployed today. So regardless of, of internal maturity and roadmap, um, looking a little bit further afield, the, the context within which this is all occurring, um, states in the United States, uh, uh, California yes. being one of them, yes. um, are starting to enact legislation that, that governs uh, use of mobile equipment right. while on the road. And so that will have an influence, won't it? Absolutely. I mean, this is a very interesting area because, um, you know, I see a legislative mandate emerging that uh, really requires uh, mob mobility or mobile applications to be hands-free. And that's an important consideration when you're looking at technology because the truth is most of your salespeople, your mobile workers are going to be in their cars or, or in some sort of mobile environment on a regular basis. And you need to be considering how you're going to enable them to be productive in that environment while also ensuring their safety and the safety of people around them. So and that's an important issue even if, in your, if you are living or working in a state where there is no current legislative requirement, right? Yes. I mean, there have been several lawsuits uh, towards companies where, uh, you know, employees were using uh, company cell phones or doing company business and, you know, they were, they, were, and they were not paying attention to what they were doing and they caused an accident, something like that. So it's an area that we think is very important for enterprise IT people, enterprise executives to consider when they're making this evaluation. Good points to consider, Hari. Thanks for joining us today. Don't forget to check out our final segment where we discuss how important a phased approach is to implementing unified messaging. On behalf of AVST, thanks for joining us.